friends of family and strangers and my family used to rape me. Um, make me uh, abort the babies I had. It would be hard to imagine more misery and suffering than what Teresa says she's had to endure. And us kids would be made to do things with the adults and the animals and then a, a sacrifice would happen. The sacrifice? Uh, were these animal sacrifices? Animals and um, people. On what scale do you think this was happening? Enormous. Far beyond what we've ever heard of here before. Teresa's mother, Bridget. You, you're talking about mass murder? Yes. On a scale that this country's never heard of before. Like the old people's homes now. I mean, these are... For the first time, Teresa is learning what it's like to live with love instead of fear. Pretty love. In this quiet English village, with the help of her mother, she's slowly repairing her broken life. Teresa is now 15, but at the age of two, she was left in the care of this woman, the grandma she called Nan. And that, she says, is when a torment started. Who was the leader? Who was, uh, who was the boss of the gang, of the cult? At home, it was my nan. Your nan uh, made you have sex with animals? Yeah. Um, like goats and donkeys. The story of Teresa is a story almost too horrible to recount. A case of child abuse that goes well beyond the kind of things we normally associate with the abuse of children. In 27 years of reporting, it has to be one of the most painful stories I have ever had to tell. How many men or how many people would have sex with you? Well, at one time. Yes. About everyone who was there, which must have been about 20, you know, from 10 to 20 people. If it was a a big ceremony, it used to be 30. What would your grandma be doing uh, when these men were forcing themselves on you? Usually laughing. Or smiling. Or having sex with another man. Or other men. A chronicle of debauchery and depravity so horrific it's hard to believe. You have to ask yourself could Teresa be just making it up? No. I know what's true and what's not. No, I know what I saw. Children don't make up elaborate lies that this would have to be if it was a lie, which I, I know it is not. It isn't. This couldn't be a terrible dream, a nightmare that you're reliving. No, it's no dream, it's a nightmare, but it's, it's not one you can wake up from, it's there all the time. This really happened, you're quite sure of that? Yeah. The police don't think Teresa made up a story. Some of the cult members are to stand trial. Five men have been charged with rape. As for Nan, the grandmother, She's 61 and lives in this council flat in South London. She's charged on seven counts of aiding and abetting rape and two counts of performing abortions on Teresa. If you're finding this hard to believe, so did I at first. But then there are the medical reports, evidence of sustained sexual abuse. And there's this, a statement prepared for 60 minutes by Teresa's psychiatrist. It says, in my opinion, Teresa's account is not the product of a psychotic illness, nor the figment of a fertile imagination. I believe her to be telling the truth. I know what's true and what's not. We also took Teresa's story to this man, therapist Ray Wire. He reads a transcript of our interview and listens to her voice. It's no dream. 
Few people, if any, in Britain have counselled as many victims of satanic abuse or Satanists themselves as Ray Wire has. If there is an expert on satanic cults, it would have to be him. Do you believe Teresa's story? I believe Teresa's story. It's exactly the same story as I've heard from men who says they've done it. You've dealt with other cases like hers? Yes. 21 cases like hers, he says, in the past two years alone. Themes like they were put in boxes with spiders and worms, where they were trapped in fear, where there was a high use of excrement and urine, where there was talk of human sacrifice. Both Take just one of those rituals, putting children in boxes with spiders and worms. Now, listen to what Teresa told her mother. And they had a coffin-like box that children were put in with spiders and snakes and the lid shut and left in there, I would have come out deranged. I could not have coped with that mentally at all. You have evidence to back up stories like Teresa's, that this yes. is really happening? Well, we have that age of child six, five and four, giving information that ties up with Teresa. How do those children know? How do those children able to describe rituals, to talk about ceremonies, to talk about sacrificing animals? How do those children know? Nightmares, imagining it? You can't imagine those things at, at three and four years old. And you also don't have the evidence of anal sex abuse and oral sex abuse and all that other abuse that clearly those children have experienced and endured. During these ceremonies, was Satan, the devil, ever referred to? He was called Lucifer. Um, what did they say about the devil, about Lucifer? That um, killing the people made him happy. Sacrifices to please the devil. According to Teresa, the worst rituals took place at a house somewhere in the country. It was big, you know, expensive. From the front, it looked like a castle. You know, it had a long drive and big double wooden doors. Do you think they were rich people then? Very rich. Now, where was this big house somewhere in the country? Teresa says she can't take the police there because the Satanists made sure she'd never know how to find it. Teresa was always drugged, or on a couple of occasions she says she was knocked out, um, so that she never fully knew the route. There was a tramp who was brought in once, you know, and he was killed. And he was cut from his throat down to his stomach. And that they, they ate him, or bits of him. They killed a man at a ceremony? Yeah. In front of you? Yeah, in front of all of, the, all of us. Did the tramp, did this man fight back? No, I think he was, you know, drunk or something. He seemed really dopey. He was laughing a lot when he was brought in. Mm. He started screaming when they began to cut. But after a while, you know, he died. I'd seen a few killings before then. Although I wasn't used to it, it you know, that was the worst one. I really don't know what I thought. I suppose I thought, thank God it's not me. Let me get this right now. Uh, are you saying that you saw more than one person killed in that house? Yeah. I've seen um, loads of babies killed there. Just newborn babies. Or aborted ones, which were only small. You know, four-year-olds. Any age, really. Did they ever say they might kill you? Uh, they threatened to kill my little girl, who, when I left, was still at the house. 
a friend. Huh? What little girl? My little girl, Alex. She's about four now. You mean you had a child? Yeah. How old were you when you had that child? Eleven. Mm. Motherhood at the age of eleven. Never to but Alex. from what Teresa told her mother, it wasn't the only pregnancy. We think um, about seven or eight times. It's hard to say. Um, it was constantly happening from the time she was capable of being pregnant. What happened to the pregnancies, to the babies? Um, they were aborted by my nan or by one of the doctors at the house. There were doctors there at that house? Yeah, there was um, two, I think. Yeah, and the and a nurse. What would happen uh, to the fetuses, the unborn babies? They used to be taken away most of the time and one time the baby was taken out of me and then killed in front of me because it was still alive. And then uh, what would happen? Well, after they killed it, they would eat it. Oh, we were also made to eat it. You were made to eat your own fetus? Yeah. Who made you do this? My nan. You'd think the one person in the world you could leave a little girl with would be grandma. Someone to give her love and protect her from harm. Yet, when Teresa was left to live with her grandmother, they might as well have handed her to the devil himself. Grandmothers, I mean, the vision it, it conjures up for you, a sweet old lady with grey hair, rosy cheeks, holding her arms out to love her grandchildren. And it was exactly the reverse. But why was Teresa living with Nan in the first place and not with her mother? Well, when uh, my first marriage broke up, um, I, I took the children with me and couldn't cope. So I gave them to their father, who in turn moved to his mother's. And to Nan's he, place? Yeah. And when he left the Nan's place, um, he left the children there. How do you feel now towards her grandma and the other people who, who did all those things to your daughter? Uh, they disgust me. They are the worst form of life this earth has had the misfortune to create. Uh, vile. Did you ever try to, to run away? You must have, been, must have been frightened. A couple of times I did, but my uncle, he caught me and brought me back. Going to the police? Did that occur to you? No. No. I thought it was normal, you know, even though I didn't like it. You know, I'm, oh. I mean, you don't like to eat greens, but, you, you know, somehow, you, you know, you thought, I thought it was just her being called to be kind or something like that. She said to me it was something that everybody did, she thought, you know, like you don't like going to school or the dentist, you don't like going to the black masses. It was never any different. I didn't have nothing to compare it to. All part of life, Teresa thought. Even a miscarriage one day at school. Yeah, I asked the teacher if I could go to the toilet and she allowed me out. I went into the toilet and um, the baby was in my knickers. And I thought it was dead, but it, it wasn't. It was still moving. And yet no one at school knew? No. Saw anything? No. Or if they did, they didn't say. No, she was treated for a high temperature, a fever, nothing more. What did she do with the baby? She kept her for a while because she was frightened that they'd use the child as part of the rituals. So uh, she turned the pencil case into a, 
little coffin. Apparently, uh, she put roses in to make her smell sweet. Put a letter with her. Pictures of herself and her brother. A picture of me. And then I put it down the chute because I didn't want my nan to get it. As we said earlier, the police have already charged some members of the cult and we know they're also investigating Teresa's accounts of those ritual killings. If there were as many she told us, then the Satanists had a problem. How did they get rid of the bodies? They had um, a tub, you know, pretty big, I don't know. A very big tub and they used to put the bodies and bones in there. And it used to go like, you know, fizzy and that. And then there was nothing left. Well, there didn't seem to be, but when they cleared it out, there used to be a sludge at the bottom. Teresa's story, her account, doesn't really surprise you. It doesn't surprise me in the light of uh, satanic abuse, no. Do you get frustrated with people who just won't accept that these things do happen? Yes, because I, I've worked with murderers in prisons for years. Not that long ago, a boy was found in a forest in southern England without a head. We have no doubts that men can do that. And yet when we start talking about men within Satanism who actually believe in evil and it's the right to express evil, we suddenly have a, a, a doubt. As I was leaving Teresa's place, she handed me this note. It's addressed to the film crew. She says, thanks for bothering to help kids like me. I hope it helps. On the other side, there's a poem Teresa made up while she was staying at Nan's place. She calls it, Nothing Left. Nothing left. I would scream, but there is no voice left. I would cry, but there are no tears left. I'd fight, but there is no strength left. That was just part of our investigation of Satanism in Britain. We're also gathering evidence about the activities of such cults here in Australia. He was called Lucifer. What did they say about the devil? That um, killing the people made him happy. Do you dismiss that as, as a child's fantasy, or do you take it seriously? Well, as a policeman and as a father, I obviously take it very seriously. Very seriously indeed. Crime Intelligence Officer, Sergeant Alan Barwick. Do you believe, Teresa? Yes, I do. What would happen uh, to the fetuses, the unborn babies? They used to be taken away most of the time, and one time the baby was taken out of me and then killed in front of me because it was still alive. And then? I would eat it. Teresa told me that she was forced to eat her own fetus. Does that surprise you? No. Why not? Uh, there are uh, this information at hand uh, that uh, we believe that, uh, that this happened before in this country. What Teresa had to endure is bad enough, but it's far from being an isolated case. We found strong evidence that scores of children in Britain are victims of these satanic rituals. But what is the attraction of these cults and how are people lured into them? In nomine de nostri satanus lucifari excelsis. In the name of Satan, the ruler of the earth, the king of the world, I command the forces of darkness to bestow their infernal power upon me. David Austin is rare among Satanists. He will actually talk about some of their ceremonies. He denies taking part in child abuse himself, but he's sure some others do. There are people that are using the occult, are using, are claiming to be Satanists, and that they are abusing children. We know it. No sex with children in his cult, says David Austin, but he confirms that sex is a part of some of their ceremonies. Some of our rights are sexually orientated and again we have to take into the fact that we do take a, in some rights a bisexual approach to some of our, our actions. I also witnessed a nine-day-old baby being slaughtered for human sacrifice. 
Audrey Harper. She spent five years in a satanic cult before she escaped. Why did they kill that baby? Why sacrifice a child? Um, Satan likes pure sacrifice and human sacrifice is better than animal sacrifice so they are pleasing the master. This is a sound that echoes down many a street in England today. It's not Satanism, but for some, it has been a stepping stone to devil worship. Witchcraft, the so-called harmless end of the occult. Nigel Bourne is the high priest, and Zeldi Bate, the high priestess. They play out their pagan rituals in gatherings they call covens. O thou circle, be thou a meeting place of love and joy and truth, a rampart of protection for all those who stand herein. Wherefore I do bless thee, and I do consecrate thee in the most holy and potent names. You're a witch. I am. Zeldi and Nigel um, worship nature and the changing of the seasons. Now is the moment of the spring equinox, when day and night are equal. Nothing to do, they say, with Satan. It's a common belief that witches worship Satan, but we can't worship Satan because we don't even acknowledge his existence. Is witchcraft harmless? No. But then no religion is harmless. You're saying it can be harmful, it yes, can be course, dangerous? Yes, of, of course it can. Anything that is taken to extremes can be dangerous. We as a coven were looking for more, really, more kicks. David Stilwell, he started off in witchcraft, he finished up in something very different. So collectively as a group, we decided to explore Satanism. Now you were looking for, for more kicks. What did you end up doing? Animal sacrifice, uh, sacrificing animals, birds and rabbits and... Um, pigeons, doves, things like that. O oh, thou incense, be thou a fit and sweet-smelling Getting sacrifice. bored with rituals like Being this turned David Stilwell in his coven away from worshipping Mother Nature to worshipping the devil. He was heading towards the kind of depravity that we heard Teresa describe. Could you look up ahead and, and think to yourself, well, the next sacrifice might be a child? Yeah, yeah, it's always something that's at the back of your mind. Um, while I was in this coven, uh, we met people of other covens um, that purported to have taken part in child sacrifice. They used to burn witches in this country, and there are moves afoot in the British Parliament to have the worst forms of witchcraft outlawed again, especially the Satanists. But that's not so easily done. Witchcraft is just another religion here and banning it opens the whole question of freedom of religion. Meanwhile the signs are that Satanism is spreading its evil at an alarming rate. We've got to be aware of it. We don't know how big it is but we've got to take it seriously. Ray Wire, the therapist we took Teresa's story to. Her case is bad enough he says but in sheer numbers not the worst. The father had ten children he ritually sexually abused them in every way possible. Those ten children were eventually taken into care. Those ten children became adults and between them they had 23 children. Subsequently, the grandfather, those ten adults and now the 23 children were all involved in ritual abuse and grandfather and those ten adults sexually abused those children in every way possible in a satanic way. I wanted, I suppose, a bit of excitement, something slightly different. Um, something that gave me an experience. Despite the harm suffered by children like Teresa, David Austin still defends Satanism. I don't call it dangerous. Um, I, I don't say it's dangerous. It's, it, it, yes, it's, it's like anything else. If, you, if, you've, if you've got uh, nitroglycerine in a hot kitchen, it's dangerous. If you start throwing, playing football with it, it's dangerous. As the athemi is to the male, so the cup is to the female. To Nigel and Zeldi, this is a sacred ritual, a fertility rite. 
Most witches agree sex is an important part of their craft, but say it's only symbolic. Blessed be. Satanists also use sex in their rituals, but it goes far beyond symbolism. Take Audrey Harper's experience. The warlock, the master, just raped me. He's the high priest of the, the coven. Married to the devil, uh, is that what it meant? That type of thing. Yes, only, the, only you know, there's no ceremony. But the act of unity completes my initiation ceremony. I now belong mind, body and soul to Satan. Married Audrey, to the devil. Said, uh, you were right. A consistent pattern, it seems. Audrey, when she was 22. Teresa, when she was a little girl. They used to um, um, marry the kids to Lucifer. So that um, we were part of him, you know. We were his. Did that include you? Were you married to the devil? Uh, yeah. Um, we used to be uh, dressed up in a cloak. And it was just like a marriage in a church, but different words, you know. What were you taught about Lucifer? Just that we should, you know, be his friend, treat him as a friend. And that he's always there if we ever need him. Why do they do such uh, wicked things in these covens? Because they're pleasing Satan. The lower you become, the more vile you become, the more pleased Satan is with you, and therefore the more power you'll get when you die. And they believe this? They believe it. They absolutely believe it. Is this just an English disease, or, or should we be worried in Australia about activity such as this? I think you must be worried in every country, including yours, and without a shadow of a doubt, you'll have groups in Australia who are doing similar things. It's almost certain that there are black covens in Australia and that there is child sacrifice going on in Australia. Do you think there are satanic cults operating in Australia? Yes, I think it'd be very naive of us to, uh, to deny that. Our crime intelligence officer again, Sergeant Alan Barwick. Teresa talks of ritualistic sacrifices. Have you come across anything like this in your investigations? Yes, we have. What kind of sacrifices? Animal sacrifices. Can you tell me anything about that? No, I can't. Why is that? It's an uh, ongoing inquiry. The problem is knowing how to recognise it. And that comes down really to, to parents. Parents recognising where their kids are. You have to wonder why no one guessed what was happening to Teresa over those 12 years at Nan's place. Not even her mother knew when Teresa came to stay with her on holidays. I think with most people, not only myself, it's such an abhorrent, disgusting thing that I, I don't think we want to hear it. So what should mothers do? Well, they take the child aside and believe them believe them it's so many times you hear about a child going from one adult to the next to the next in an effort to get somebody to listen I mean in Teresa's case she the people she told joined in and she thought I was going to too that was a real blow I I cried for weeks over that that she would look at me and think that I I could do that. What would you hope to do with your life now? What are you looking forward to doing? Just living, being happy. What would you like to do when you leave school? Care for children. Handicapped ones, you know, or abused children like me, maybe. Now, Australian police want your help to compile information on satanic cults, especially cases where children are being abused. Uh, any sort of information at all, uh, anybody that has some suspicions about um, a cult uh, working in their particular area or they know of people who are involved. If there was someone watching this program who is involved in a satanic cult and wants to get out, what would you say to that person? Well, come forward. Uh, there are many welfare groups around that uh, can assist and uh, 
certainly uh, we can uh, point those people in the right direction and certainly offer them protection if it's necessary. In New South Wales, the police hotline number is 0220966. That's 20966. In other states, you should contact police headquarters in your capital city.